Good morning, everyone. Last night, I received a letter from Chief Brandon Del Pozo offering his immediate resignation from the Burlington Police Department. With great sadness, I have accepted his decision. While I believe that Chief Del Pozo has been truly an outstanding chief, and while it was clear to me that despite his mistakes, he continued to have considerable support within the city council, the police department, the police commission, and the community. It was also clear that if he continued to serve, the days ahead would be very challenging for him, his family, the department, and the city. I appointed Brandel, Brandon Del Pozo to be our chief four years ago in the wake of terrible police incidents in Ferguson, Baltimore, and elsewhere. From the moment that I first read his application, I believed him to be exactly the right person to lead the police in this progressive city at a very challenging moment in American law enforcement, and he was. Chief Del Pozo's time in Burlington should be understood and remembered as a period of remarkable progress and innovation. <coughs> his letter of resignation summarized some of what we got done on his watch, and here I'm quoting from his letter. We are able to fight the opioid crisis as well or better than any other city in the nation reducing overdose deaths by half in 2018 and sustaining that in 20, into 2019. Our methods have become a national model for saving lives. We closed the gap in racial disparities on our roadways in many ways and came to acutely understand the reasons for others. Our innovations in the use of force and de-escalation were literally the nation's pilot and they will endure." End quote. The department achieved all this and more while never losing focus on reducing crime and upholding justice. Again, from his letter, we, are, we lowered violent crime, making the city as safe as ever. Our detectives solved countless difficult cases from hate crimes to sex assaults, giving justice and hope to our city's victims." End quote. Chief Del Pozo was an excellent communicator with the public, and he understood the very substantial pressures and risks faced by the <clears throat> women and men who wear the police uniform and serve as guardians of this community. It was an honor and a privilege to serve with Chief Del Pozo, and we wish him well in all his future endeavors. I will miss him greatly, and I believe Burlington will as well. We are fortunate, however, to have an excellent police department that is much stronger than any one person. <clears throat> I've asked Deputy Chief Jan Wright to serve once again as acting chief and she's agreed to do so. I'm thankful for that. I will, more, I will have more to share about the appointment of a permanent chief in the days to come. I'm committed to doing everything I can to help the acting chief and ultimately the new chief to move past this unfortunate chapter and to continue doing the excellent public safety work we expect from the Burlington Police Department. Finally, I, I want to say to the men and women of the Burlington Police Department, Thank you for your brave and steady service. I will do everything I can to support you through this challenging time and important transition. Uh, we're, as soon as we're done here, we will post uh, Chief Del Pozo's resignation letter um, online and you can get copies of it from uh, Olivia. Um, uh, the Chief has made it clear that he intends this letter to be his final word on on the events that have happened and that he does not intend to respond to, to further media inquiries at this time. Um, I would ask everyone's understanding that this is a very challenging time for the chief and his family and that you consider respecting those wishes. Um, with that, um, I'd be happy to answer some questions. Mayor, why wasn't the city council or the police commission informed back in July when, when Chief Del Pozo took his leave of absence? It seems like that could have at least gotten ahead of a lot of this. Yeah, thanks for the question, Ryan. So, um, <coughs> as I hope my statement on, on Friday and statements of seven days made clear, um, upon my learning, the, the chief, the chief self-reported to me back on July 28th what happened. And um, immediately upon going to work the next morning, um, took a series of decisive actions, launched an investigation. Um, that investigation led by 
the city attorney who's here, and I'm going to let her speak to you a little bit about our thinking in a moment. But um, uh, led by the city attorney and our and our HR director, um, very quickly uh, uh, <coughs> found that based on the determination of two medical professionals, um, that the chief's actions had been impacted by a medical condition, by a mental health condition. Um, from that point on, we made the decision to treat the chief like we would any other city employee, which is to say that we attempted to protect his medical pri privacy. Um, that's an important value that we hold in this community and that we hold as a city policy. I know it's a value that is often unsatisfying to the media and to the public because it um, protects um, employee privacy at the expense of transparency. Um, this incident was different than the many other times where we have medical privacy issues within the city when we have personnel issues because I was clear with the chief and I was clear with my entire team that because of the chief's actions and because of the chief's uh, position, um, uh, there was a limit to that privacy and that um, I would not be able to protect that privacy um, when asked directly about the tweets in question. Um, uh, we are the recent days have unfolded as they have um, because seven days last week for the first time um, asked me directly about those tweets and um, I gave the full accounting that's now before you. Is, is that the only reason why you even mentioned it, even why we're sitting here right now? The way we chose to handle it, Liam, um, uh, was, again, to, to treat the chief as, as we would um, really any other employee that we believed and had medical verification was suffering from a medical disorder, a mental health disorder that had impacted his actions. Um, and that meant that, um, uh, yes, we were intended to continue to not answer questions that were about the medical leave and his health. So you never would have. But, the, but I was clear from the beginning. I gave, I gave Courtney last week the same answer I would have given at any point. In this process had I been asked about the tweets in, in particular. So I think this would be a good point. I'd like to bring, I'm, I'm going to stay here and answer as many questions there are, but I would like, because I, I think we're quickly at trying to understand my reasoning and the advice that I was getting, and I'd like to actually ask the city attorney to, I will come back here to be clear. But what was I, your I, reasoning for lying to the people, to the public? To I the reject categorically the idea that that characterization might well, you, Okay, misrepresentation, fib, whatever. <laughs> I reject that completely, and that's not, well, your, not a fair your own notice says that's not a fair character. Away his, his badge, his gun, his cell phone. When somebody goes out and is having a baby, do you take their gun badge and everything? You took more than a typical family leave, you know. Mayor, can you so, clarify when it? Could he when answer he his question first? Badge. Can he answer that first question, and then you can go back. Um, I'm not sure what the answer was, what the, what the question was in, in that, Mike. Uh, I think Did all I heard in that is a mischaracterization of the way I, the the way I handled it. Um, if you're asking for um, the timing of events, yeah. um, um, you know, the timing that I'm clear on, Courtney, is uh, the chief came to see me at um, about 5 p.m. on Sunday, the 28th of July. Um, I um, thought about what he had said to me throughout that evening and um, went in the next morning and immediately first order of business convened a meeting with the city attorney and with our, which our, with our HR director and we launched an investigation. Um, I, my recollection is that um, we determined at that initial meeting that um, the chief needed to be immediately put on leave and I believe he was done so that morning, certainly that day, and um, that we uh, asked him to turn in the equipment um, uh, uh, that I've listed at that time. So when did it become an FMLA leave? So um, somewhere between that meeting and 
when the announcement was made that he was on FMLA, um, I would have to go back and check the precise records on exactly where that was. I think the point is, maybe, maybe the point that you're driving at is, um, from that moment on, there was an open investigation, um, and uh, we um, um, do not, as a practice, take decisive final steps uh, with respect to um, um, discipline or other steps until the investigation is complete. I actually think this is maybe a good point for the city attorney to talk about the framework um, that we use that she advised me on with respect to communications to the council, to the commission. Um, Eileen. Thank you. In relation to the, uh, what the mayor has just said, the mayor is in charge of, he appoints department heads, he is in charge of the personnel in the city, and we treated this as we would treat any other personnel matter within the city, and that is that the um, individual was immediately placed on administrative leave. That's why his gun and badge, et cetera, were taken, because he was placed immediately on administrative leave. While we looked into to understand the extent of what had occurred, the next phase was that fairly soon thereafter, and, and, and I don't know the exact date when he get, went on FMLA, we received medical information indicating that the incident was connected to a medical condition. Once we get that in, in information, then we wait to see what does the medical information tell us over time as to um, whether, whether or when the individual is uh, fit to return to work. And that was the process that we went through. And during that period of time, it would not be usual for us to involve uh, um, volunteer commissions or the city council in a personnel matter. Can it have been an abuse of power with um, his role on a community mental health board in the community um, in which uh, the, the person he harassed was also a worker in that same setting? And uh, the online harassment is a form of bullying and very concerning to a number of members of our community. Was there any thought uh, by city leadership at all to repair the damage to that individual who was probably very intimidated by being harassed online by the chief of police and didn't have the knowledge that the chief of police had had his gun removed, which might have actually uh, relieved some of his concern for his own safety? I'm, I'm unclear whether your question is addressing some new incident or the one in question here, I'll say this, we have received um, a number of complaints uh, over time and in recent days about the, the chief's uh, conduct and, um, and have had investigations on certainly everything that has been raised in recent days and have not um, uh, confirmed that uh, any of these other concerns that have been raised uh, were, were accurate. Before we, um, before we, bef <coughs> before we, let Eileen sit back down. I sense there were some, maybe some more questions about what she had laid out there with respect to how our charter works, how our city policies work, how the relationship between um, the mayor's office with respect to employee issues works uh, with city council members and with um, uh, the commission. So if there are more questions on that area before we've got, I think this is a good time to answer, ask them while Eileen is up here. Certainly, it does appear that there was a period of time where the chief was on administrative leave but it had not yet become a FEMLA situation. So, Mayor, you're indicating that this was handled in accordance with past practices, but we have, haven't, hasn't the city in fact released in the past uh, instances where officers were on administrative leave? There, if the administrative leave had continued for some period of time, there probably would have been a decision, but fairly quickly we were aware that there was uh, either that there was some medical involvement or the possibility of medical involvement. As soon as we know that, we have to start looking at medical privacy issues, and that's what occurred here. But the portion when he was on administrative leave should have been a public record. Uh, um, again, I, 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 if I correct me if I'm wrong here, Eileen, but. There was an open investigation, and I do not believe it would be customary for um, the city to release information about um, uh, individuals um, uh, 
uh, about their uh, disciplinary action until we've completed the investigation. These investigations frequently take unexpected twists and turns. One of the principles of these investigations is that you suspend judgment until you have all the information. Um, and I'm glad we did it that way because um, what that, when we had all the information, we knew that um, his actions were implicated uh, by what two doctors felt at least um, uh, was a, a medical condition, a mental health condition. And I, I, I think that principle of waiting until the information is fully known before taking action is one that I think is a good practice for city officials to follow. So we Could you answer the question though? There was a <coughs> period of time when he was on administrative leave, you took his badge, you took his gun, you took his cell phone, yep. you told him take a off social media. That wasn't a family leave thing. So there was a period when you would put him on administrative leave, yes, which there was a brief other period. times police officers, rank and file, get put on administrative leave and you say they're on administrative leave. So what makes the chief so special in this case? During um, that one, whatever it was, six hours, 24 hours, whatever. I, I understand your question. It, it was a brief period. Um, it was a period, I think, um, I would have to go back and review all the past. Uh, I, I'm not sure I accept your suggestion that um, we have treated uh, other uh, officials differently. I certainly don't think um, we would release information about any officer um, and the mistakes they had made until we fully understood the situation and understood um, all the relevant facts. I don't. I don't think that is the city's practice. So when you have a um, shooting and you put them on administrative leave, you give that out. It's certainly well. Okay, I think there. Uh, there's a fair point here, Mike. I think this is a fair point. Um, when um, uh, there are times where the city doesn't have the luxury of um, completing the investigation um, uh, before there needs to be some kind of public response. Um, uh, and you are right that in those situations when it is clear that the actions, because, because, because of the events that are widely known, when it is clear uh, that um, there is an issue that has to do with a certain officer and that we need to make clear to the public that we are, are doing something, that is a time when we use administrative leave to, to sort of pause things and we let people know about that until we figure it out. This was not one of those situations. Mayor, what do you have to say to the people of Burlington saying that you took his gun, you took his badge, you knew he lied? So moving forward, for you, what do you have to say to the, uh, the people of Burlington? Um, sure, I think, well, we may need you back. Right now. <laughs> um, listen, um, I, um, I, I think the people of, of Burlington have put me in this office three times because uh, they know that the mayor's office is a challenging job where often the mayor's job is to balance different competing interests and to take thoughtful actions. Um, the, every step of the way here, I was informed by the professionals advising me, I was informed by the law, um, I was informed by um, the desire to do right by uh, part of the city team, by a member of the city team, um, and I took actions that were informed by compassion. Um, certainly, I'm aware others may have a different opinion about uh, how I should have handled this challenging uh, situation and this set of facts. Um, uh, I, I've gotten a lot of feedback from the people of Burlington that they appreciate um, the deliberate approach that I took to this and the, the reasons I did what I did. Well, you don't think that uh, the city council or the police commission, even an executive staff, should have had some inkling about what was going on, considering the chief's job, public safety, I mean, that's a big, I understand that, you know, there's a protocol for a normal route of a city employee, but he's in a position that's particularly important. And the you know, police again, just had no idea this was going on. Um, again, as the city attorney um, has stated, it is one of the few areas of um, city action where um, it is really the responsibility of the mayor to handle personnel decisions as the mayor sees fit. And uh, there certainly um, are situations where a notice um, 
uh, to those other bodies would be appropriate. Um, we did not feel at any point in this process that we reached that point until <clears throat> until recent days. Mayor, in the initial comments from you and from the chief acknowledging that this had happened mm -hmm. and so on, there seemed to be um, the idea that he was uh, sorry and intended to continue in his role. What changed? Um, well, Matt, um, I, uh, as I think I've communicated in a number of ways, um, I was very troubled by what the chief did that last July, um, but ultimately decided um, in September to reinstate him and to give him a second chance. And I decided to give him a second chance um, for a number of reasons that I've laid out. I thought the fact that he had self-reported the actions was significant. I thought the fact that he had, um, at the time of the infraction, if you will, the amount of time that these tweets had been public was less than an hour, which was brief, was an issue. The fact clearly that um, we had medical professionals saying his actions were Im impacted by his medical condition in fact, he had taken steps to address that medical condition. Um, the broader context of the chief service, which again, I think has otherwise been extraordinary, um, and the general principle that I try to guide myself with, which when employees come forward to admit mistakes, if it's possible, and it isn't always possible for a variety of reasons, but when possible, um, I think the right thing to do is to give people a second chance. And I, um, did say to Courtney last week um, that I stood by that decision in September and it was always very clear to me that there's a good chance that this reckoning was coming uh, because um, you know because of the limits of because because I, I would answer directly uh, uh, the questions that Courtney asked me it was um, uh, we made the decision to give the chief a second chance understanding there was likely at some point that that, that there was going to be full scrutiny and evaluation of his actions and um and i stand by that decision i think it, it was the right decision to give him the second chance and my sense in recent days uh over the weekend um is that many many people in this community um were um more than happy to give him that second chance thought that was the right thing and would have supported him going forward However, it was also clear, and this wasn't clear last Thursday, it was also clear that um, that was not a universal feeling and that the days ahead uh, were going to be challenging. There were going to be calls for his resignation. There were going to be, um, there was going to be ongoing questioning of his conduct. And he ultimately decided that he didn't want to go through that, that he didn't want to put his family through that. He didn't want to put this department through that and he didn't want to put the city through that and that's what changed between now and last Thursday as the chief reached that conclusion um, last evening and I while again very sad um, accepted that conclusion so you didn't ask did you, ask did you ask for his resignation I did not ask for his resignation I, I we had a, again a long conversation where I made it clear to him basically what I just said, um, that I believed he had considerable support and there was a way forward, but it would be a very painful route forward. Um, it would be one that um, he would face ongoing scrutiny and questioning. Um, and I want to be clear, Mick, so you, yeah. would not have, you would not have come out and said anything about this incident unless someone asked you about it and then you wouldn't have <coughs> lied about it but you weren't going to just come up and come clean about this anyways Liam you know as I, I yeah I, let, I, I'm being as clear about this as I, as I can um, the decision we made was that what we owed the chief like we owe other city employees is that we were going to attempt to protect his his medical privacy particularly given that this was a mental health condition particularly given the stigma that attaches to mental health um, especially in the public safety realm. We, um, um, I'm cognizant of all that. Well, I, I think there was a new point. I, 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 your question, let me just finish your question and I'll give you another question. The, um, 
I may have lost just well, uh, well, just guess, so, just so, lost, lost the thread there. There, Go there ahead. are ways to to talk about these things yeah. with, and like to come to an agreement about what you you know pri medical privacy and issues that directly affect the public. I mean, the mm -hmm. mayor, the mayor, the chief lied to a reporter about doing this and was in a position of power heckling a critic. And these are all things that you know, as the chief of the mm -hmm. police force in the largest city in the state, like. Right. You should, there should be some accounting for that. And yep. Listen, it, I was aware of the misstatement to, to Courtney and that the fact that that was out there uncorrected weighed on me. Um, ultimately, we decided um, that there was no way to correct that um, uh, or otherwise raise the issue without immediately bringing us into this realm of protected information that we um, were attempting to to protect the chief from. Um, that's the way we made the decision, and that's why we are where we are now. I'm curious if, the, um, if you listened to the audio of I my did. interview with him. Yep. I'm curious if that um, changed your view of the situation at all, because I think you just said that he made a misstatement when I first spoke with him in July, but it was really more than a dozen times that he denied his involvement with it. I'm curious if that changed your view of things at all. Um, <clears throat> I did listen to the tape recording, and um, I was surprised by it, the way it, it went, the way in which he handled that went beyond my understanding of it, as well as um, the understanding of um, other people who had been involved in the investigation. So he wasn't honest with you when he told you about the conversation with Courtney? <clears throat> um, when you said it wasn't your understanding. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that he soft pedaled that. He what? I think he understated the degree to which um, that, the way that conversation went. So he lied. What benefits is uh, the chief still entitled to? Uh, is his relationship over with the city, or is he still getting health benefits, or is, it, is his paycheck still coming? You want to speak to that? Um, he has, well, the mayor has just received his resignation yesterday. Like any other city employee, the people have accrued. And this is a resignation. He has some accrued benefits that he'll be entitled to. I don't know the extent of those. We haven't looked into that yet. Um, so there will be a period of time that he's entitled to benefits. It would be the same as any other city employee who resigned. But had he been fired, he would not be entitled to any benefits? Uh, no. The, uh, there isn't really a... I'm trying to think if there's any distinction between firing and resignation as far as that goes, and nothing's coming to mind. The city doesn't have a penalty clauses that say if you're, if you're fired, you lose benefits or anything like that in our policies. Are you going to give them anything additional, uh, any going away severance package or anything like that to, to not that he's going to be able to land a job right away other than? Um, we're going to pay him what, he, what he's owed for his employment agreement with us, as the city attorney just said, and, and, and that's what we'll be paying him. Mr. Mayor, question for you uh, and for Deputy Chief uh, Murad. Uh, I'm just curious, it, it, have you ever seen knee-jerk behavior like this before from Chief Del Pozo? Impulsive, anything of that sort in his time in Burlington? Um, the, um, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll say this. The, um, Uh, we were all, of course, aware of the very serious accident that the chief had in um, the summer of 2018, um, and we were aware that um, you know there was very serious injuries to his head. Um, uh, I think all of us um, were um, were watching him after that and hoping he would he would be the same person that um, he had been previously. And I think um, I found from the first day after the accident when I visited him in the hospital that um, when I interacted with him, um, I, I found him to be, um, be the same person and, and to, um, and I did not uh, in, in witness uh, anything that I would characterize as impulsiveness or behavior that would anything like what um, happened on the, on the 4th of July of last year. Um, whether 
I can't speak for others. I don't know, Deputy Chief, if you want to add anything. No, I did not. <coughs> so you took the stance, you know, of deciding to, you know, reveal to the public about this when the media asked you a question about it. Is that a policy that, you know, that stance you take on other issues in the past? Is there anything else going on now that the city of Florida reported that, you know, immediately? Yeah, fair question, Aiden. And no, this was a, this is an exceptional situation. I, I would hope. Listen, I, I, I ran for office on a kind of platform of public trust, on a, on a pro-transparency platform. Um, we have always tried to conduct our business conscious um, of, of that commitment, and some in the room have even complimented this administration um, in relative to some of our peers on the degree to which we go to really try to make good on that principle of transparency and be as fulsome as possible. Um, in our responses to public records requests and, and it's very accessible to the media. Um, I hope we've lived up to that in a lot of ways. Um, this was an exceptional situation and, um, and I can't think of another situation really comparable to it in any way. But in the interest of fair question. What's, what's the status of the investigation into the associated claims that the chief may have abused his uh, role as a board member of the Howard Center to attempt to get this critic fired? You want to speak to that, I think? <clears throat> yes, uh, um, we have not announced this um, in any way, so I'm telling you for the uh, first time, but my office has looked into that, and uh, we found that the allegation was that we were aware of was that the chief uh, contacted the CEO of um, uh, the Howard Center and complained about Charles Winkleman, and we found that that was not true, that uh, somebody else did uh, contact it and made that complaint. Who was that person? And <clears throat> that person um, was uh, Sonny Prevetto. He is a, um, uh, a consultant with the Burlington Police Department, and he was concerned about um, uh, co things that Mr. Winkleman said about him on Mr. Winkleman's uh, blog. The uh, Burlington Police Department faces a number of pending lawsuits, and uh, the chief is potentially, I would imagine, a witness in some of these. Is the fact that he's uh, admitted to being less than honest a, a concern in, in, in terms of, you know, how is this, is this a, going to create legal problems for the city in these suits? Um, I think there may well have been uh, attempts to use this incident um, against the city um, in future lawsuits had he continued on. That is one of the things I think may have, uh, could possibly have, one of the one of the things that the chief and I both identified is why the road ahead, if he attempted to stay on, um, would be challenging. And Mayor, did you say that already then uh, things brought forward, has this already been threatened or? Um, that's not what I said. I, I, um, I said that we anticipated that exactly that concern um, uh, could well um, surface in the days ahead. And that would be, that was one of the things the Chief and I talked about last night uh, um, uh, in understanding that the road ahead, if he stayed on, may well be very challenging. Are there any other decisions that the Chief made between the time that he came back from leave after his crash and now that were reviewed or are currently under review? Beth, I'm not sure I understand your question. Can you say that again? Are there any decisions that the chief made between the time that he came back from leave when he was in his bicycle crash and now, I other see. than the Twitter um, thing, that are have been reviewed or are currently under review? Um, I, I don't think I can think of anything, but can, um, so uh, certainly not some kind of like formal investigation or, or review. I, if there's something more specific behind what you're asking. I'm I, just I, wondering yeah. if there were any concerns about yeah. the other decisions that you made during this time when he was affected by mental illness. Um, uh, no, I don't think anything that would rise to that level that we were considering reviewing the decision or overturning it or going in a different direction. What about the, the case up at the hospital, his handling of that? I mean, that certainly was botched. You know, he covered up the... Uh, the fact that one of the Burlington police officers put a guy in the hospital and he proudly said we'll never put out a press release when we put people in the hospital. How about that one? Is that uh, the standard you want for your police department? I'm not familiar with the quote you're saying. I, I, 
listen, I think we've well, I think Jan been White was on that conference a, call or somebody extensive. was on the conference call with me on that. I can't speak to exactly that quote, Mike. What I what I can say is I think there has been um, extensive uh, review of uh, both the chief and my actions during that incident. I'm not sure today is the day to, to relitigate that. Um, I, I continue to be confident that everything that the chief and I did um, was um, uh, at the, again, um, in consultation at the advice of the city attorney and I think was appropriate. Uh, we followed the appropriate chain of command uh, for the concerns that we had. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't put that incident in this category. Do I have any regrets about the way I handle, I've handled this incident with the chief? Um, um, you know, I've thought a lot about that, Aiden. I'd say at this point, I think it was a very challenging um, set of decisions that I've had to make throughout this. Uh, I'll leave it to others to second guess and critique. Um, uh, where they think I could have done better. I, I guess I do just hope as that process um, plays out that um, the people of Burlington know that, again, uh, the principles that I was trying to stick to through this process involved following the law, following the city practice, following this notion that our city employees deserve some level of um, privacy protection um, when uh, health matters come up. Um, and. Um, desire to be compassionate and a desire uh, to not too quickly conclude that this man who um, had performed outstanding public service in a variety of capacities for a long period of time, not wanting to too quickly come to the conclusion that he could not continue to serve the people of Burlington. Um, I, um, it's been a very hard, hard um, issue for me from the day it started. Um, but uh, I hope people will see that I acted um, uh, with integrity and, and did the best I could through a challenging time. Do you think Charles Winkleman had a right to know five months ago who was, who was coming after him? Um, he certainly yeah. expressed that he was I, I, um, uh, On behalf of the city, because I don't think it's been said yet, on behalf of the city, I do apologize to Charles Winkleman for, for what happened. Um, I don't think there was any way for him to get that apology and to raise uh, with him um, uh, in the same way that I did not see there being a, uh, a way to correct the record um, without immediately going into this area of information that we were trying to protect the, the, the chief from. Uh, by the same token, I don't think there was a way to address that with Charles until now. Are you going to visit hope with him personally or are you just going to let um, the media tell him that there's an apology out there? I visited with Charles a number of times in the past. Those conversations have not always been uh, productive. If he wanted to meet again, I'd be happy to meet with him. Jan, for however long you uh, serve as acting chief, how will you work to um, you know, rebuild some trust uh, with the community that this department serves? Well, I can tell you that uh, there's a number of initiatives that Chief Del Pozo started in this agency, and they work and we'll continue with those initiatives. Um, I will work as best as I can with my employees here to try and build trust again. Um, that's an issue that we need to work out within our walls and um, we'll do the very best that we can to work with the members of the public. And what are some of those initiatives you said that Chief Del Pozo uh, was behind that you, you see as working? Uh, the mayor mentioned a number of those things, and that was with uh, community stat, with uh, substat, with uh, <coughs> our ERV and our emergency response vehicle, and the initiatives that we've taken with training and having officers available for that. Um, the list goes on and on, and I can tell you that Chief Del Pozo has, has made us all think in, in different ways um, than we ever had before. And uh, I'm appreciative of, to him for that. Is there any collusion between Mr. Rivetto and Mr. Del Pozo? <coughs> we did not find any. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, do you have a uh, bogus account, Twitter account, or have you ever had one to uh, silence your critics, and, and or have you ever had one on your behalf by some of your staff? 
No. Very Ever thought about having one? I mean, listen, I think, um, you know, it's sort of a joking question, but I, no, I think no. there's a, I, I've never seriously thought about having one, but I, I, I do, I do think um, there is a serious conversation to be had here as, um, as uh, the state's attorney has suggested about how we, how we treat each other online. Um, some of the things that are said about um, public officials are very cruel and, uh, and it's, um, it's, I certainly understand the impulse to uh, want to hit back in some way when, when, you, when, you're, when you're attacked. Um, I've, I have never um, done that um, in the way that you're asking. Um, and I hope this incident makes clear that um, that is not what we expect from city officials. Um, um, but I do think the, the issue of how we treat each other, how we stay civil, is an important one and you know to that point I, I must say um, I was really quite surprised by the tweet that the Progressive Party put out um, earlier today after I told them I told them last night mm -hmm. that the chief was resigning they still felt the need to pile on this morning and call for his resignation <clears throat> I think that was particularly cruel and um, I hope they'll consider uh, withdrawing that and uh, acknowledging that that was uncalled for. Does the city have a social media policy? For we have a draft social media policy that is essentially the policy of the city. It's, um, it's going through city council review and public employee review. It is something that has been pointed out has been in evolution for a long time. This is a period, this is something that we've all been trying to figure out what's the best way, uh, what what is the right way for, for city employees um, to communicate on social media in their private life, in their public life? Um, it's you know an area that's evolved quite considerably in the time, the eight years that I've been in this office. Um, we do have a, a draft policy that we're functioning under currently, and my hope is that that's finalized shortly. A question for Acting Chief Wright. Um, is the message now business as usual from Burlington Police? I'm sorry, what was your question? Is the message now business as usual from Burlington Police? Um, moving forward well this we still have to do our jobs and we still have to be out there every single day and and through all this our police officers have done that every single day with great success so yes we'll we'll continue to do that I'm curious if either of the deputy chiefs knew about the twitter account um um i do not remember exactly when the deputy chiefs were brought in from the department. When did they learn, each of you? John? I don't recall the exact date. But Roughly. It's, I don't recall the exact date. That's not the question. Roughly. I didn't ask for an exact date. Did you learn last July, August, September, October? <coughs> Take a month. We learned in July when the, when the investigation was happening. That he had misrepresented or lied to the mayor. Or, in, or excuse me, to the uh, to Courtney. I knew that he had lied to Courtney. That was part of that was part of the reasoning for him to go to the mayor. Okay, thank you all for being here this um, morning. Just quickly, yep. you yep. mentioned uh, mm -hmm. next steps. I mean, when yeah. are you going to be talking more about a permit? <clears throat> Liam, you know, this has been a uh, really fluid situation, and again, it wasn't until last night that. Um, it was clear to me this is that, that we were going to be looking for a new chief today. Um, so I have not figured out exactly what the process from here looks like as soon as obviously that will now become a front, <clears throat> front of mind, uh, front burner order uh, it, issue. And I'll give you updates on that as soon as I have a plan. And aside from the social media policy, are there any other citywide policies that you're mulling, like changes to or reforms based on this incident right now? Um, including disclosure. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think mean, like that, the, the special uh, right, right. policing is looking at that right. for these situations exactly. So, um, I've had conversations in recent days. Uh, I see Michelle Ash here, who's the the chair of our, our police commission. She and I have had some preliminary conversations that, um, you know, I think we should all use what happened here as uh, an opportunity to review the way we. Um, the way we conduct our business. Um, it may be that um, we should 
write down some new guidelines or protocols for how um, the mayor uh, interacts with commissions or the council in in, uh, in situa- comparable future situations. I'm open to that possibility that we could all benefit from some additional guidance and that you know I wouldn't have to just figure it out like I did here um, in some comparable future situation. I think I will say I will be, I will guard the the responsibilities and the authority of this office in, in such a review. I think it's very important that the mayor um, uh, have the clear responsibility of managing department heads. I don't think it's something that uh, uh, can be um, beyond the ways that we do easily shared. Uh, you know, I think, it's, I think it's quite appropriate that we reappoint our uh, department heads on an annual basis. I think beyond that, supervision, direction, is really hard to give as a by committee. Um, I don't think we should move towards that, but it, it's certainly possible that um, I'm open to conversations with my colleagues that um, maybe we should look at some, some, some additional steps in, in situations like this. Have you thought of any self-discipline for yourself for the mishandling of it? Um, Mike, again, I, I'm I'm at peace with the decisions I made. I think I made took every step, um, um, uh, uh, conscious of the the competing <coughs> interests before us. Um, uh, I took every step, trying to do what was best for the city, for the department, um, for a member of my team. Um, I hope the public sees that I acted um, with integrity and in making some challenging choices. Um, uh, I don't, um, at this point, um, uh, have um, see what um, I would have sh- or should have done differently uh, going back to last July. I'm sure that's a point that will be debated by others, and uh, I, I'm, I, will, I will remain you know, open, open-minded. Open that a lot of people see that other side. I hope in our conversation today, I've sh- shed some more light on why I did what I did, and and, uh, and I uh, I hope people see in that um, decision making consistent with the reason why they put me in this office three times. Thank you all, um, and I say again to the people of Burlington, to this department, um, that I'm uh, committed to offering all the the support and help I can as the, the Burlington Police Department goes through through this transition. Thank you all.